My name is Farrah June, and welcome to the all-new show, Fahrenheit TV. So excited to be back for season five of our show. And this year, we're going to do things a little differently. Fahrenheit TV. Since 2014, we've been putting people in the spotlight who live in their greatness. Whether they're expressing themselves through their art, their activism, or their work, we're inspired by those who choose to live audaciously. Season 5 is here, and although we're temporarily out of the TV studio, we're committed to continuing to bring you stories that will uplift your soul. Catch all of our new monthly episodes right here on our YouTube channel. Welcome to another episode of Fahrenheit TV. I hope that you're having a great evening and that your summer is starting off to a wonderful start. Today, I am so honored to have a role model, a Boston elite, someone that has really shifted our culture for the better, who, who is really, you know, giving artists a platform, artists of all kinds, and just really have given the community something to look forward to and making, like, really creating joy. I think that you're among other things that you do, Catherine, you, you really create joy. So welcome into our virtual platform is uh, founder and executive director of BAMS Fest, Catherine Morris. Thank you. Wow, that is a great introduction. I appreciate that 100%. I mean, I could have went on and on and on because you know, <laughs> you are an exceptional queen, but I'm very, very grateful to have you on our platform to talk about BAMS Fest and really talk about this um, music series that you have this summer called Amplify the Soul. But before we get into all of that, I just wanted to check in with you. I know we spoke a little bit before we started this, but just really check in with you and see how you're doing, especially with this ongoing pandemic. How have you been able to find peace during this time? Um, you know, my mind is strong. My body is exhausted, right? Like it's my physical vessel is doing a lot of different things. So it's just tired, right? Yeah. But mind is constantly envisioning trying to figure out how to continue to push um how to continue to be passionate about the things that i love uh and representing boston as well as just um you know being a fan being being an active citizen being an advocate as best as i can on top of being a mom and, and a sister and a daughter um, but yeah, just, you know, physically exhausted, but, you know, mind-wise, I'm, I'm strong, stronger than ever. Yeah, you're stronger than ever. Um, you are a natural superwoman in my eyes. So I know that you're going to get some of that me time and more time, hopefully, just to kind of, like you said, pause and, you know, relax and stuff. But you've been continuing to make, you know, waves in the city and, in be and beyond. Um, and I, I really want to say one of the things I really admire about you, especially millennials like us, is that I remember growing up, you know, people used to say, oh, Boston's so boring. There's not enough things for us to do, at least like in my neighborhood. And I used to be like, oh man, like I wish there was things for us to do, especially us creatives. And then I got older and then I met all these amazing creatives that were like, you know what? We're gonna make this happen for ourselves. So yeah. among the other things I admire and respect about you, I love that you took this vision for, you know, the Boston Arts Music Festival, made it come true, made it alive and it's ongoing. And so I just wanted to ask you, like, what inspired you to create Bands Fest? And, you know, did you run into any challenges, you know, making this vision come true? Yeah, no, that's a great question. It always, it always depends on how far back of the narrative you want me to go. But <laughs> essentially, <laughs> 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 um, essentially, you know, growing up, I'm a Boston native. I, I grew up during the era of talent shows and competitions and, you know, you really had to work hard to compete to be the best of the best. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the part of nostalgic, like that's the nostalgia of Boston I absolutely hang on to um, as, I, as I was trying to conceive um, Bands Fest. And um, I had to leave a little bit. I went to Philadelphia, I went to Temple University. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I love Philly, they have like five murals there and stuff. Oh yeah, it, it's definitely an arts and culture, um, a city, it just through and through. And while I was there, I um, I originally started off in radio. I started off in mass communications. 
I wanted to be a radio uh, personality for the rest of my life. I got bored though. Um, and then I changed my major and went to tourism, hospitality management, but I never worked a day in hotels. I went into that major because uh, at the time, event production, event management was the first time I'd ever seen a university offer that as a part of the curriculum. And while I was there, I threw myself in any and all kinds of events that you can think of. And, and being in Philly and watching the community, watching the variety of artists, watching city government and state government invest in holistically supporting all types of arts from all different kinds of neighborhoods, mm -hmm. I was absolutely inspired. And particularly, I um, took up an internship with the city of Philadelphia. And uh, at the time they were producing a festival that still exists and called, it's called Welcome America. And I was under the leadership, under the supervision, I should say, of two amazing women. Uh, one uh, black woman named Ivory Allison and a, and a white woman named Valerie Legascus. And both women had 30 years of experience in all kinds of live events. And so I'm just like, show me your ways. <laughs> And I was thrown into the toughest neighborhoods of Philly. I got to work on the concert finale, uh, which at, in that year was John Legend, Patti LaBelle, and Holland Oates. Um, I, I was just so smitten by the exhaustion of producing and supporting events that would bring communities out, that bring visitors and tourists out. So when I graduated from Temple, I came back home and I'm like, yeah, so Boston has nothing yeah, that I represents know. black music, black arts, black culture in a way that gives local, that prioritizes local artists first over headliners. Yes, and I knew right. that would be my niche. That'd be the, the innovation of creating Bounce Fest. So I uh, spent a couple years doing some odd jobs, ended up at MIT for about eight years in oh, their wow. student activities mm -hmm. department and helped over 500 undergraduate student groups produce events each wow, year. Wow, you were super busy. Super busy and went to grad school at Simmons University. And that is where I randomly took a business plan writing course mm -hmm. and developed a business plan for Bands Fest in, so, in 2014. <laughs> Wow. Oh my gosh. So basically since then, since your internship, you took all of those experiences. And also when you were, you know, producing events, you were like 12 years old at the uh -huh, Boys and Girls yep. Club. Basically <laughs> all your life experiences, it was like, all right, I'm gonna bring it to my city and make, you know, those visions come true. I, I love that. And I respect that too, because a lot of times creatives move out of the city because they don't feel uh -huh. like there are opportunities. So I'm glad that you created one and also that you help other students make their visions come true. It's important. You got to pay it forward. You know, yeah. like I'm not going to be around forever. So if there's if there's a different way uh, to give young people perspective on how they should be looking at events, it's not just the event itself. It's literally mm -hmm. the the logistic leading up and then the impact and legacy afterward. Like is if it's memorable, yeah, people yeah. will talk about it forever. Right. Definitely. If there's something that they can't get anywhere else, they'll talk about it forever. And so keeping that in mind, having studied a lot of different events, having put myself in many different internship experiences, I just felt like at that moment, okay, no one's really out here doing that. Granted, Boston at that time and still does have cultural festivals, which are absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In terms of centering local artists, black and brown local artists, that, that wasn't there. Yeah, that wasn't there. I was like, at Culture Fest, yeah, we like, you know, represent like the Caribbean culture and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It wasn't really like a, a stage per se for like artists. You're right about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, that's that's how all the inspiration happened. And, you know, as you mentioned earlier, I I, pro I produced my first talent show with 13. So, you know, the, the, the event bug was in me. What it came down to was figuring out how to translate all of the lived experiences as a Boston native uh, into a culminating event that would make Bostonians proud, that would make Black Bostonians proud, that make mm -hmm. local artists proud. And eventually with the festival particularly, um, put it on the map as one of the 10 festivals to visit on the-, yes. on the Like that's a goal. 
Yeah. Um, and it's gonna take some time because I don't because no one's really done what we're doing. It's gonna take some time to convince people that we deserve to have it. So mm -hmm. once we get past that phase, I believe that we'll eventually make it to that top ten list. Um, I want to say like already in my eyes, you guys are in top ten. You're number one. So <laughs> I think you've already made you know like in terms of Boston, I could tell you that the community already feels like that because. You, you were just saying, you know, if it's a memorable experience. And I would I would say all the people I've talked to that had the blessing to attend, you know, BAM Fest before the pandemic would say it was more than memorable. I mean, for me, it felt kind of like a family reunion, mm -hmm. but with like, you know, a bunch of creatives. And I remember right. the, like the day I went, I was the last one in 2019. Yes. Um, and I remember it was raining that day, but it felt refreshing. I was like, yes, <laughs> rain on us, rain on us. Like, it just felt really good. So you know, I think you're, you and your team are doing such a great job. And I'm really, it really inspires me too, because it's not like you just want to make like another, you know, uh, like event where, you know, oh yeah, people, artists come, you, but you pay the artists, you get funding, you get entrepreneurs, black and brown entrepreneurs to be part of it. Like it's, yeah. it's a whole, a whole thing. It's, I, a, I it's a whole vibe. Like yes. it's a whole mood. It's, it's really about, um, sustaining, amplifying, and preserving our culture because we just, I no longer refuse to wait. Yes. You know, and of course that has many different lenses, but but for me, again, coming off of, you know, the 90s, you know, where talent shows were bustling and, and like, you know, the Missy Elliott days and the Leah days yeah. and all those kind yeah. of things, like all that is a vibe that, you know, with Bands Festival particularly is our hope that we can a homage to that nostalgia and history while you know providing a new lens on how this festival is specific to Boston, New England as a whole, but that we are we are um, ensuring that artists do no longer feel that they have to travel somewhere, yeah. you know, <laughs> spend more money to settle down, restart all over. Like Boston is all about loyalty, right? Mm -hmm. We are the hardest people to convince. Once you convince us. <laughs> forever right yes taking that and going somewhere else god bless you i get it mm -hmm. but um i just no longer wanted to wait and wanted to make sure that there was something happening here so that folks can aspire to be on our stages yes and i really love that catherine and i like i can't wait till bands fest comes back next year you know after this pandemic is hopefully got in a better place um but i really love that even this year you know, Bands Fest didn't pause. They 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 adapt to this to the um, situation that we're all you know experiencing. And you made this music virtual music series called Amplify the Soul, which I've been tuning in every Friday. And I have to tell you, I love it. I love the production. I feel like I'm like at a like a exclusive cafe or something, <laughs> you know, or like House of Blues, and I'm like getting to experience these artists, but get a bonus because they get to talk about their artistry, which I really love that you mm. incorporate that in, whether that's you or Tim interviewing them. Um, and so I just wanted to talk to you about that and like what inspired your you and your team to bring that to life to create Amplify the Soul. You could tell us a little bit more about it. Sure. Um, so you know when when we had to postpone BAMS yeah. Festival, yes. <laughs> um, we did not, you know, we, we really looked at our mission and vision, right? And we want to make, we want to continue to make sure that we, even in times of a pandemic, still honored, still pushed forward about breaking barriers, even in the digital space, right? Yes. Now, to do that, that meant we had to go virtual with our program. So, but also at the same time, we recognize that, you know, this, this idea of what does Black joy look like? What does yeah. rest look like? What does connection and socialization look like in a digital way? Um, and how do we still um, give artists, Black artists, Black and Brown artists, the opportunity to still reconnect with the stage, even if there's no physical audience, but that mm -hmm. their music you know, in a digital way can go from local to global. So we pivoted yeah. to amplify the soul as, as I know as much as people were exhausted of, of being on a screen, mm -hmm. the beautiful part about amplify the soul is that it is centered on music for everyday people. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter black, white, Puerto Rican, Haitian, you can tune in and there is something about any one of those performances that you can identify with because of the story mm -hmm. of the artist. 
but also a factor of centering joy, right? Like we have been desensitized by many things that have been in our media. And there was all this conversation about is music going to return back or concerts going to be the same? And I'm like, no, they're not. They're going to absolutely change. Mm -hmm. You know, hybrid will be, will be the new thing where it's not just in person anymore. You also have to live stream it now, which some people are doing. So as an organization, as a lean organization for us, it was, well, how do we pivot knowing that this content now lives on forever? Our viewer count right now is ridiculous because people can now watch it at their own leisure. Mm-hmm. You know, with like an in-person concert, which is absolutely amazing. The reality is that if you miss it, you miss it. Yeah, you got to wait till they come back to the city, maybe a few years from now. You never know. And that's a thing, right? Mm-hmm. And, and we lose out on the opportunity to connect with those artists unless you're following all of them. Mm-hmm. So with this, it was an opportunity for people to decide when they wanted to see this content and engage with it at any point. And to be able to also to your to your point earlier about learn about the artists. Yes. Oftentimes we as consumers, as audience members, take take um, for granted uh, about the performance, and we never really, really, truly spend time actually understanding the content of the character of the yeah. artist mm-hmm. and who they are and how they arrived at this point to do what they do, because it comes in many different forms. Yes. So yes. this series is all encompassing of access, of storytelling, of music, a variety of shifting the narrative and identity of Boston, mm-hmm. um, that black and brown people do live here and that we have something to say and that we are creative. Yes. And, yes. and here are 11 artists doing that. Like that's just a dime in the bucket in terms of we represent and support and hire and and promote over 400 black and brown artists just from greater Boston. Wow, so wow. to see 11 of that, y'all in for it. We had the, um, the blessing to talk to Steve Chandy of, about you know his experience. And he just said it was like so surreal. And so I have like so many questions because other than like the musicality and the production work, like, you know, I've noticed every performance is like, the performance set is all different. And like, you know, like I was thinking about Kale Vani's set and she had vinyls in the background mm-hmm. and even the lighting will be different. And I'm, I'm loving that because I feel like I'm, I'm at a different concert every single time. You know, I'm like, oh, this is so fun and it's free. Um, so like, w- was that intentional? And did the artists have like any say in that? Like you work with the artists to kind of do that. So the, the, um, the choice to work with Big Night Live um, during a pandemic, mind you, this is a time where everything was closed. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, keep that in mind with people. Everything was closed at the time. Wow. And prior to the pandemic, um, I had been a huge fan of, of that venue. Um, they had just opened, like just before the pandemic, they were only open for three months. And so this venue was just sitting. And I love the versatility of the spaces. And I'm like, you know, there was this desire between Vans Fest and Big Night Live about centering local artists. Like they bring amazing big names, but local artists aren't necessarily a thing. Yeah. And so choosing yeah. this venue was intentional so that artists, local artists felt and understood that they deserve to be in a space like that, that right? Yeah. High quality, state of the art, all those kind of things, and know that they have literally left their legacy in that space yeah. um, with it. Mm-hmm. In terms of in terms of look and feel, we partnered with the Loop Lab, which is a, a nonprofit um, organization that gives uh, high school and college age students the opportunity to see themselves and work in the field of audio and visual, and they um, really capture the essence of the look and feel. We also partnered with um, That Child Got Entertainment and worked with a handful of black and brown creative directors Mm -hmm. to get direction on camera and angle and shots. Um, So it was all encompassing. What was unbeknownst to the artists was that every week that we released the content, the performance, Mm -hmm. 
it's their first time seeing it because we want element of surprise oh wow <laughs> <laughs> well, i mean i guess that's a good thing that way they won't you know because we're literally our, our worst critics so that's Absolutely. a good thing in a way wow they must have been so anxious like 8 p.m come right on. right <laughs> all of it is, is beautifully intentional it's it's the mm -hmm. factor to your point we we already know that artists will critique themselves just like well we can't go back in time so it's out here in the world. We're not going to make you look ratchet or, or crazy. We wouldn't deliver you like that. But know that there's a bands fest way that we always aim to present local artists, knowing though that the team that makes it what it is are black and brown people. So you have all these different creative directions, you know, feeding into the final product, which we're very proud of. And, and you know, Big Night Live had a huge part in just the aesthetics of it because they gave us access to their venue. And it looks so beautiful. Like really, I'm just, even little things like the lighting, the camera angles, everything that you said, I'm just like, wow, they really thought about this. You could tell that like you, you have so much passion for it, like your whole team and that you really want the, the artists themselves to shine. And, you know, I'm just thinking about it, like during this pandemic, you know, a lot of artists lost so many opportunities and uh, stuff. And so I know like finances was hard among oh, other yeah. things. So just like giving them the opportunity to, you know, not only go on stage and you know share their greatness with the world but also just get paid for it i think that's awesome but i was gonna ask you like was the selecting the artists hard at all because i could have imagine this was like super competitive in my mind i'd be like <laughs> Bands Fest, yes i need to be part of this like how can i do it so how did how did your selection process if you can um go about you know selecting the artists and like why did you select some of the artists that you selected well i think we were very fortunate this year because the lineup that you see now granted uh, for 2020 um we were slated to have i think it was 18 acts wow and then you know COVID hits right mm -hmm. So we basically carried the lineup that we've had for almost two years. Now, granted, the pandemic and life, you know, led us to the core 11 that we have, but we were fortunate to, we, we did not want to break our promise of, hey, COVID happened, you got to start all over. It's mm -hmm. like, no, we're still out here trying to figure out how to make sure that we honor our commitment of you being on, a, on one of our stages, whether that's virtual or in person. Mm -hmm. So we maintained the lineup that would have been in person had COVID not happened. Oh, that's, that's how we led to this. Yeah. Oh, thank God. I know they must have been so like relieved, <laughs> like, yes, we still get to be a part of it. That's so, and I wanted to say too, another thing, um, especially the musicality of like every episode I've watched, I feel like it's a different like genre of soul music. So like you might get a reggae feel, you uh -huh. might get a gospel feel, you know, R&B, hip hop. Like I love that because I feel, again, it feels like a new experience, a new concert every single time. So like, I, I love that you guys incorporated that. Um, oh, thank you. It, it's it's all about perspective. You know, I, as I say to all folks, um, all, you know, black music is all music yes. in whatever genre that is. So. Um, the, the, the variety of it really comes down to like melody, you know, lyricism, um, tempo, all those kind of things. But no matter what, you know, our creativity penetrates every genre that has ever been created. Wow. So to show that variety is important so yeah. that we can start to think bigger or at least um, look more in depth about our versatility and untapped talent Ooh. about what we can deliver. Yes, that was beautifully yes. said. I, I I know why now you said Alex, Alex, Alex excellence is like the standard for you guys. Yeah, excellence like, yeah. is the standard. That's Absolutely. what I see every episode. Excellence is the standard. I also noticed that um another thing you your team worked on this uh this year was um creating the Audacity series, which I yes. just tuned in. I mean, I'm not like a musical artist myself, but I did feel like there was a lot of gems that they shared that, you know, you still could use if you're a creative person. Like they were talking about like the chart metric and other things. I'm like, wow, I never even knew these things existed. So like, can you talk briefly about why it was important for your team to kind of create this series? I know it's been going before, you know, uh, this year, but like, why was that important for your team to kind of, you know, teach people more about like the business side of being an artist? Uh, one of the things that's important to us is that uh, while we are known for our festival platform, we do more than that. We educate or what we like to say, edutain. edutain right? yes. So, 
Um, you meet people in the field and, and you know, whether it's through performance or conversation, you're still learning something. Um, and we also advocate for um, artists, you know, whether it's going to the state house or uh, connecting people with their city counselors or, or state reps. So we, we we're very layered in our approaches because the reality is that there's not much representation at the top for us. And so we're one of the few organizations that really try to be at the helm of uh, those hard conversations or, or, you know, holding folks accountable about supporting black artists mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. across the board, not just in performance, but in their basic needs. Yeah. And that way it's just popular to do so. Right. Like this, this is about survival of art. If art disappears, our world disappears. And at the helm of that creation comes from the creativity of Black people. Mm -hmm. And in a city like Boston, it often gets ignored. So yeah. with Artdacity, it's the opportunity. We wanted to create a hybrid model. Eventually, we'll move this to being in person. We want to, in response to COVID, um, be able to create this series that allows for hard conversation uh, around certain topics or topics that really affect um, black and brown artists and creative entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. their fans and communities at large. So whether that's uh, being, uh, being unapologetically a black woman, whether that is uh, um, education on how to monetize your playlisting as an artist, um, or what does it mean to be an artist and entrepreneur at the same time and, and what, how has the game changed or even honoring uh, you know, the people who have paved the way for us to even be here, like um, Keith, oh, Google, Elon, um, right? Mm -hmm. um, we don't really get to have those conversations mm -hmm. in a public forum. And if we do, they're probably at a university or a college, which mm -hmm. for just to open up to community at large, that's not really happening. And yeah. so this platform yeah. allows for a variety of different perspectives, Black perspectives, lived experiences, to find intersectionality between creating and being a um, consumer of that creation or building a business off of that creation that allows us all to um, come together, that allows us all to learn from each other, support each other, purchase each other's work, yes. Um, yes. all those different things. So with Ardacity, the, the intention is really about encouraging social cohesion, cohesion and encouraging civic engagement mm -hmm. and current, encouraging uh, participate uh, participation um, as a as a fan or a concert goer or someone who goes to someone's art show. It's all encompassing, but we have to understand each other's humanity before we get caught up in the fanaticism of each other's titles. Yes. So it's important to understand that about the people who create, people who are also in the audience experiencing that creation, um, and how do we preserve it? How do we uh, exactly. commodify it? How do we commercialize it? Like, how do we build our own system mm -hmm. or ecosystem that allow us to benefit versus other dominant cultures? Yeah, I love that. And I know that artists and other creatives that are able to tune in or able to experience what BAMFest has you know, provided um, for free for the community really benefit from that and learn and enhance their intellect, especially if you um, just want to be an independent artist. I think yeah. it's so important for you to learn the business, and especially from all the people that you've had on the series are people, they're all around the nation, you know, they've worked in so many different like departments of music or of the arts in some form. So I really appreciate that. And I, I have a question because I know Bands Fest is going to come back next year. Uh, but I was wondering, like, are you going to con um, consider continuing these digital series? Because I feel like, I mean, I might be selfish, but I still really love them. <laughs> so I'm just wondering if you're going to continue to do these digital series, um, even when things get better. Um, in the world. I think the reality is that, you know, um, events in general, the events industry is forever going to be different. And so offering a hybrid model will absolutely be the future of our experiences. Yes. And so I imagine um, that some things will be online, other things will be in person, right? Like mm -hmm. there, is, there, are, there are, I think our platforms allow us to go from local to global on certain things. And then there's just mm -hmm. Boston stuff that only Boston people really can talk about, right? Yeah, I like so, the exclusive stuff. Yeah, the exclusive stuff. So finding that balance is, is really where we're working hard to decide like what topics really are a national you know, conversation, what are really more hyper-local. 
that will allow for that hybrid model of, you know, well, let's take it online, you know, nationally, or let's like do this pop up at adult space that allows for, you know, New England or, or, or greater Boston uh, folks to actually have access to the conversation. Yeah, I love that. Um, and I forgot to ask you this question when you were creating Amplify the Soul. Did you do this, like, because I know you said everything was kind of closed and schedules are different. Like, how long did it take you to um, film all 11 of those performances? I know we have one scheduled every Friday for this summer, but that's a lot of work, you know? It's not it just like one camera. I'm like, <laughs> how, how did you do this? Like, the, how many people do you have on your team? Like, I just, you know, the production of it really, and like, you know, inspires me so like how long did it take you to film or that's a great question that? that's a super great question so you know the team of bounce fest is volunteer led Ooh, even I like even that. i volunteer yeah. my yeah. time right yeah so you know one of the things that we're really committed to is ensuring that as much as we can within our our power is find um minority owned black owned businesses that we can hire to do this work Mm -hmm. uh because it's important that it's not just what you see in front of the camera it's also who's behind it that part and so we spent basically three days what to pre-record to pre-record 11 performances big shout out to the loop lab and that child got talent entertainment because they really pulled it off um as exhausting as it was but yeah we literally pre-recorded 11 performances in three days that is amazing. That makes me think of like a Hollywood set. Like, uh, I'm like, what? And especially because you told me like the Loop Lab, you know, has young people in it. So I'm just like, all of these creative intellects, all ages, they're, they're here. They're, they're here, here in our mm-hmm. city. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. Three days. You must have been exhausted. No one said you were tired. Wow. That is, it's, and I love, again, I love how diverse it is. Like you never feel like you're watching the same thing, even if it's with a new artist. And every Mm -hmm. artist also was sharing some really great gems, like, you know, good advice. Like I just tuned in last week to like John Hope and he was talking about the importance of like taking care of ourselves because a lot of our like, you know, hip hop, you know, legends are like, you know, passing away at such early Uh ages. And I was like, wow, like this is deep. I don't think I could ever go to a concert and hear something (laughs) like this, you know, this is something like one of those exclusive conversations you have if it's like you're in a circle Uh with people. So I really hope everybody tunes in um, to really experience this this music series because you not only, you know, amplify your soul, but you get inspired and you learn and you connect with people. And I'm so grateful to your team for, you know, creating this. You know, July is National Minority Mental Health Month. And I know you talked about the importance of rest, but I was also wondering like, how else do you protect your, your um, mental health or your peace? And like, what advice would you give to other, you know, creatives? Um, I think one thing I've learned through this pandemic is that, you know, with all the technology that we have access to, um, it gave more people access to us individually. And so I've had to like totally reshift my schedule that really blocks out time Mm -hmm. just for me, whether that's 15 minutes, an hour, 45 minutes, um, starting my day with a walk, stretching, um, listening to really, really great music. Like right now I'm on, I'm on a um, Afrobeat soulful house kick right now. Like that's where my vibe is for like the last day. Are you coming in with the moves, Catherine? Are you coming in in your house? (laughs) do another 15 minutes working on it i'm working (laughs) on behind closed doors um okay (laughs) but like i i've i've been you know super super into like some really dope international black artists and i'm like of course my mind's going but so how do i bring that to boston but Mm -hmm. um you know and also just shifting the way that i have my relationship with food you know like um stress can can force you to do some very interesting things and so i really had to assess my relationship with water and like salad and things like that and and, you know we're starting to get to like each other a lot um (laughs) and i think the other thing that that in terms of um you know rest and joy is actually being still or finding laughter i don't hear a lot of people laughing yeah um and i understand times are what they are but like genuinely like i've not heard people like have like a good hearty 
like a, wow. like yeah that's true right um because it does something to the whole body right yeah. you know chemical neurons all those kind of things so I try to find funny things I really try to find comedy or things of that nature just so that my spirit isn't always tied to a computer or everything you know bands yeah. fest or everything something else I really try to find laughter and things mm -hmm. um and just being around really really great family members you know just yes. really choosing my tribe wisely because I know I'll have my moments and the people that know me best, you know, know when to step up, step over or step back. And yes. so really just trying to find my tribe. I love that. And I, I was watching some episodes of like live experiences and I know your mom is definitely a great support system. So oh, yeah. I love That's to hear mom. that. And I love to, I, I love how your mind is already going like, hmm, maybe you've been listening to like WizKids because I love that <laughs> Essence song. Like how are we going to get him here? I'm pretty positive. I'm so positive you're going to find a way to f bring some of those international black artists here. Oh, yeah. So I can't wait to see what you're, what you create in your brilliant mind. Uh, so the last question I have for you is how can we support you um how can we support you and how can we support bams fest sure um one is you know um like subscribe follow and share our content you know the more people that can see it enjoy it comment on it things of that nature the the, the bigger our, our our community brand can be so that we start to gain national and international attention yeah. so please 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 do those um obviously you know as a nonprofit organization um, and investing in our organization is important. So whatever that dollar amount is, it really does go a long way. Uh, we, as, as a volunteer staff, barely even take a cut. It, it literally goes back into the artists and all of our platforms. So we, we do this out of the kindness of, of passion and love and really want to see the landscape of Boston, but also just the, the um, the culture really benefit from um, staying on its own two feet. So mm -hmm. any kind of investment folks can give is absolutely warranted and, and needed, especially coming through a pandemic. Um, the other thing is, is that, um, and I know I get this all the time, is uh, please know that we do more than a festival. You yes. know, we need people who, um, to join our team you know, around advocacy, around um, um, community organizing, around program development. Um, again, we only, we do several platforms. Bands Festival is our biggest one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, our Dacity, Amplify the Soul, we're coming, we're going to be uh, coming right back to Versus or Vibes this year that we did last year. So we do all these other opportunities that give artists the, the potentiality of being seen, heard, and validated. But it takes, you know, intelligence, it takes strategy to do those things, marketing, communication, um, uh, business operations. We need all those kind of folks to join our team. So if you're interested, uh, definitely hit us up on our DMs and Instagram um, at BandsFest, or you can email us at info at bandsfest.org. That's awesome. Well, I know I'm going to be you up soon. <laughs> yes. Um, so thank you so much, Catherine, again, for taking the time to join us on our virtual platform. And more importantly, for, you know, being so selfless to create all of these opportunities for us creatives, for our community, for our city. Like, there's no doubt in my mind, like, Bands Fest is going to be as big as, like, Afropunk and, you know, all these other big festivals that they do. So this is just the beginning. And I'm, I love that you're, you're documenting everything like the live experiences I love that you're doing that because I'm like they're going to show this on the big screen one day they go, <laughs> I can see it like you want to see the behind the scenes oh she already got that I, I love it so and shout out to your entire team because I'm just like that to have a loyal team like that that also has you know just as much passion and driven just like you you know led by a phenomenal queen like you I I, I really love that and I'm I'm very um thankful for it you got it. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. No problem. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs>